Well, it didn't take too long, but I think I may have already found a pretty early contender for 2022's worst game of the year with Wars and Roses. At least as far as indie games on Steam are concerned anyway. Not to be confused with War of the Roses, the War of Roses or War and Peace. Wars and Roses is described as a tactical first person shooter where you fight alongside beautiful female soldiers and then interact with them in a 3D dating sim as opposed to a 2D one. And right off the bat though, I've got a question how good a soldier they can actually be if they even lack basic trigger discipline. Anyway, you'll rescue captured officers and gain affection through various scenarios, fighting side by side on an anti-terrorism campaign, and on paper, all of that sounds pretty good. In practice, however, it's pretty much something entirely different. The problem is that I'm kind of like a fly attracted to a honey glazed turd when it comes to games like this. I mean, I know they're bad for me, I really do, but I just can't help but play them and then make these kind of videos on them. Even when I'm as sick as a dog like I've been the last couple of weeks. <laughs> this really is just another in a long line of games made by people who I think speak English as a second language, taking full advantage of the Unreal Engine as a tool and Steam as a platform to release a crappy shoot with that allure of adult content, but one that'll ultimately just never be finished. Yeah, don't think we've all forgotten Together BNB. Been almost a year now since I did a video on that thing, and the devs have done absolutely bugger all with it since. <laughs> Only, wait a second, yeah apparently this isn't in early access, it's the full release. So why does it then have so many bugs? Doors that lead to nowhere and menus with coming soon placeholder text. Along with two girls who can't be rescued or unlocked yet and two final missions which aren't even available to play. I don't know, maybe they should rename the game to War and Roses 2077. Got he! <laughs> but what's the whole thing about? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <coughs> oh, fuck! But what's the whole thing about? Well, I'm so glad you asked. The story is you're playing as a guy simply named the Commander, who kind of looks like an NPC from Metal Gear Solid. And kind of just like in Metal Gear Solid, the plot focuses around a PMC group called Black Rose. Black Rose is a super elite group comprised of highly trained female soldiers who all happen to look like Victoria's Secret models. And you're soon enlisted by Agent Natalia to come on board and rescue all these various operatives that have gone missing behind enemy lines or something. And again, they can't really be that good if they got themselves caught, can they? Yeah, lion! Breaking down the missions themselves is pretty easy. Now, each chapter has five levels, with four of them being combat assignments, and those are always just moving through a single location and taking out all of the bad guys. You got missions set inside a convenience store, construction sites, subway stations, and oh my god, there's a level set inside a school. Go Cubs. They feel like a cross between old Counter-Strike and Call of Duty maps, and they're usually just small areas that are enclosed and pretty simple to navigate, with a bunch of enemies in the Reggie Ion that you have to find and then kill. Along with often making sure not to get innocent hostages caught in the firing line, hostages who look like they got kidnapped out of a Nintendo 64 game. There's a few times you'll also have to defuse bombs as well, none of which have any time limit, so there's no sense of urgency or tension whatsoever. And I gotta say that I don't see how any of this makes it a tactical shooter. I mean, I guess the basic inclusion of leaning left and right and that high lethality kind of counts. You can also give basic directional orders to your squad, but that's about it. I mean, there's no tactical planning, rules of engagement, or anything like that. Moving out. You start off with little more than a pistol, but also get instant access to a pretty huge roster of guns. You just first need to earn the cash to buy them. Weapons can be equipped with silences and sights, but the same can be said for pretty much any other shooter made in the last couple of decades, 90% of which weren't really tactical either. Plus, I don't remember tactical shooters having a dating component to them either. It'd be like playing one of those old Rainbow Six games, and then at the end of a mission, you could take out Ding Shovers to a fancy restaurant. Now, while these environments do seem like they're modelled after real places, they also kind of feel like they're separate from reality, oops, there goes gravity, and being held in this kind of nightmarish limbo. It's like an arena suspended in time, populated with the souls of fallen warriors, now forced into eternal combat against this bevy of gun-toting bimbos. NPCs will frequently glitch in and out of the map itself like they're breaking the rules of space and time. One of the earliest levels is set inside a convenience store and the first couple of times I played it, enemies would just keep spawning inside a room that didn't even have a door. The only way that I could fix this was by aborting the level and then trying again. Loading in once more and then hoping that the RNG didn't spawn these guys inside solid matter. 
Half the time it'll open a door or turn a corner and there'll be a spot on the edge of the map that they just forgot to close off. Reminds me of that scene in Ghostbusters when Sigourney Weaver- <coughs> Fucking hell. It reminds me of that scene in Ghostbusters when Sigourney Weaver opens her fridge. Then some of the missions takes place in these environments that I can only assume are supposed to be inspired by the works of MC Escher or something. You're like, check out this car park, right? It has a bunch of cars and a door to get in, but do you notice any way to get out? I mean, there's an elevator over here, but good luck fitting a car into one of those things. It's like their room's just designed to confuse and disorientate. During that subway station mission, at each end of the tunnel, there's just simply dead ends. Barricades, bollards, and giant walls of concrete preventing anything from getting in, or I guess more importantly, anything escaping. The real point to playing through these levels, aside from earning cash, buying new guns, and having an existential crisis, is to recruit these new members into Black Rose, and this always happens on the fifth mission of each chapter. Enemy eliminated. During what's little more than just a static conversation. Most of which are staged in a way that makes it look like the beginning of a Brazzers video. Yeah, Lion! You've got a nurse, a sniper, intelligence operative, a mechanic, and an undercover agent. And they all look like they've come from the same asset library as half of those crappy visual novels used that get released on Steam pretty much daily. After you unlock a new member, you can then add them to the squad, where they'll come along in missions and help out, going from one teammate to a maximum of four, at which point the game just becomes laughably easy. In fact, you might almost want to start cutting back one or two of them, so there's at least some kind of challenge. After each mission, you get a cash reward for the mission itself, a bonus for the amount of enemies killed, and then another bonus for playing on higher difficulties. So the gameplay loop then just becomes playing missions over and over, buying better guns for yourself and for the girls, because anything you can use, they can use too, from helmets and armor through to pistols and rifles. If you get killed during a mission, instead of it just instantly ending, it lets you spectate these agents instead. Yeah, you spectate them from a third person perspective, like it's CSGO or something. Though in their defense, these bots have actually clutched a couple of times and finished off the remaining enemies. I do think it's kind of dumb how you have to manually buy grenades and medkits every single time though, like why they couldn't just have a loadout that gave you a finite amount at the start of each mission is just beyond me. The armor system too is also kind of weird. Now, you can wear different pieces of armor on your head and torso, along with tactical knee pads, which is something your mother I think is more than familiar with. Schwacked. But I do have to say that I didn't see much of a difference between any of these. In fact, I think I actually took more damage when wearing the heavier armor. And it honestly wouldn't surprise me if someone's just coded this thing incorrectly. Like they forgot to carry the one for instance and didn't give it the right value, so it somehow offers up less protection as a result of just a simple error. Apparently the heavy armor also makes you move slower, though again, that's something I didn't really notice. All in all, you seem to move at the same speed and take the same amount of damage regardless of the armor you're wearing. So I guess where I'm going with this is just to say bump up that difficulty mode, because at least you can then maximize the money you make and limit the amount of time you're ultimately gonna have to spend with this thing. Kill now the most annoying thing about War on Roses is the gunplay, and I just don't understand why all of these crappy adult themed shooters always have to have such horrible gunplay. I mean is it some kind of prerequisite or something? I don't know if it's the game's way of trying to simulate more realistic ballistics, but shots frequently do not go where you're aiming despite aiming down an ACOG or a red dot sight, and it also has one of the worst examples of simulated recoil I think I've honestly ever seen in a game. To the point that firing full auto for too long started to give me motion sickness along with jaundice. Are you serious? Most of the submachine guns are pretty crappy. Rifles are definitely better. In fact, I think the FAMAS might be the best, but even still, it just feels very inconsistent and don't even get me started on that shotgun. It's a bit of a shame too, because the weapons do actually look kinda good. And there's a whole heap of them here as well, some of them having pretty decent reload animations. They're based off real guns, but then given fake names for whatever reason. So you've got guns like the PD-90, the UPM-45, and the Desert Hawk. I don't know, as opposed to a Desert Eagle, I guess. But they're just so unfun to use. It's like you're trying to shoot someone with a goddamn water pistol. And I just found that regardless of the gun I'm using, the bullets just seem to always miss where my sights are pointed. I think that putting a silencer on these does decrease the spread when firing. At least I noticed when I started putting silencers on things, I was able to hit things a bit more often. But for a shooting game, the shooting is just really crappy. And it's like the most basic thing you've got to get right here. Screwing this aspect up is like making spaghetti bolognese and using rice noodles instead of actual pasta. <laughs>
and it's a problem because you're going to be spending a lot of time shooting in this thing. Don't know if you've noticed, man, but we're not exactly going through these missions trying to get these terrorists to join their hands and start singing Kumbaya. Later on, most of the missions are these outdoor forest type areas that look like a combination of something out of one of those early modern warfare games and the Stalker series. And this I think is when it's definitely at its worst because enemies are always off in the distance somewhere, crouch walking around and they're about as hard to spot as a good article from Kotaku is. <laughs> There's a gadget you can buy and give to the girls which essentially lets them ping enemies, putting a big exclamation mark above their head which is almost essential because otherwise you're going to have a really hard time trying to spot them out from the background. And yeah, more than that, good luck fucking hitting them. They really should be selling this as an early access game because calling it finished is just an insult to almost every other game on Steam that made it over that line. For a lot of the missions in this game, the end objectives don't even trigger and you can't even progress. The only way I was able to get past this was by looking for help on the Steam forums where I found that someone else was also having the same issue. Somehow that person had found out that there was a cheat code which lets you skip levels by pressing both F1 and B at the same time and yeah, lo and behold that actually worked. But this error will just keep happening again and again and again. And again and again and again. For one mission, it's like they just forgot to give the environment the basic rules of physics. So you can just walk right through these solid objects. It looks about what you'd expect for an indie game running on the Unreal Engine 4. That being female character models that have had way too much effort put into them. And then environments and enemy character models that look like they're storeboards. Physics will often completely spaz out when people are killed, and I don't even know what's going on with these ragdolls. One time a girl got gunned down so violently she contracted alopecia. <laughs> it's also got those other dog shit visual effects you see from people who probably don't know what they're doing, with things like flat light maps, an abundance of ambient occlusion, and anti-aliasing so blurry that you'd swear your eyesight was going. So many of these environments are just completely bare bones too, just feeling empty and lacking props entirely. Or I guess worse than that, just copy pasted assets over and over. Yeah, go Cubs. Then there's this mirror, which has to be one of the worst looking mirrors I've ever seen in a video game. And it's like it's not even trying to reflect what's on the other side of the room, it's reflecting another goddamn dimension. The only thing in the game that's really had any effort put into it is the modeling for all of these female members of Black Rose. And look, I get it. I mean, if you're going to put effort into one aspect of this game, it's got to be this. So we know the shooting side of things is pretty much broken and the game looks like crap. We've established that. But how's the real meat of the whole thing, the dating component? Well, don't get your hopes up. Right, so all of these girls join the squad with an affection level of one and through taking them on dates and giving them gifts, you get to work your way up the ranks, so to speak, to get into their good graces. Only, it's a dating sim that lets you pretty much outright skip over the dating aspect entirely. You can take them on dates in various locations, which on a startling attention to realism, you've got to pay for. But these are really just animated slideshows where the woman stands around making random observations. Like, do I think these shells are edible? What? Come again? No, I don't. No one past the age of three has ever thought a seashell was edible, you idiot. Then at the end of these dates, you get a few affection points gained toward leveling it up. The thing is though, you can just skip all that stuff entirely and buy them these expensive gifts, which speed up the process immensely. You can buy them things like perfume, earrings and champagne, and yeah look fair enough, those are some mighty fine items. And sure to get you into any woman's good graces if bought in excessive quantities. And it kind of makes that other side of the dating mechanic just completely useless. I mean, yeah, it might be true to life standing around and listening to a woman talk about themselves and their own interests for hours on end, but it's not very fun from a gameplay perspective and sure is a hell of a lot slower. Then either way, when they reach certain affection levels, you can then unlock different events. Events which, again, just play out like animated slideshows. There's no voice acting, there's nothing exciting happening, just you, the girl, a wall of text, and balls that will end up distinctively blue in colour. Some of these are just kinda weird, like meeting up with that medic girl in a cat cafe where she's actually dressed up like a cat. No shit. And yeah, the amount of missed joke opportunities here is just astounding. I never forget a pussy. Cat. At one point during another date, one of the girls started weirdly referencing the exact same scene in the game I was currently playing. As I was playing it, by giving commentary she watched it on the TV. I mean, fuck, talk about meta. 
and then despite getting to the final stages for all of these girls, all you really get is a sore finger from clicking through all of that text, because at the moment there's pretty much not even any adult content. I mean look, actually that's not entirely true, there kind of is. There's free DLC you can download that unlocks the so-called intimate content, which is kinda cool I guess, if you wanna see one of the characters looking like she's getting groped by Thing from Adam's Family. A lot of the dialogue during these scenes also reads like how people would talk to each other over AOL Messenger or something, and it's clearly been written by someone who has very little human to human interaction. Just a word of advice, most people don't say heh heh in real life. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. And it all might have been okay if at least this stuff had proper voice acting. I mean, there is a definite appeal to hearing bad dialogue poorly delivered by some poor unfortunate voice actress who has no idea what she's gotten herself into. Nana was dancing as far ago. What happened? But all of this is just completely silent, aside from some really crappy looping music in the background that I'm sure is something pulled from a public domain library. So wrapping the whole thing up, you've got a tactical shooter with not really many tactical elements and crappy shooting, and a dating sim with barely any dating. Yeah, that about sums the whole thing up. And may God have mercy on your soul. A game called War and Roses fails to deliver on the two main elements in its namesake. It's like playing a game of snakes and ladders and then removing the snakes and the ladders. So if you want to play an actual tactical shooter, well, then go play Ready or Not. It's been out on Steam for a while now, but it's far more fun than this is, and it has some really true-to-life weapon modeling and ballistics. And if you want to play a dating sim, well, I'd say go check out Sucker for Love. Yeah, this thing just came out on Steam, and again, it's a little bit different, allowing you to get your very own eldritch horror as a girlfriend, and still vastly more interesting to play through. Despite how I rip these kinds of games to pieces, I really hope people never stop making them. I mean, they're dreadful to play through, but they are surprisingly fun to make videos of. Would I recommend buying it though? No, I wouldn't. But the benefit of the whole thing has been that in the six hours that I spent playing it, it did make me forget that I had a crippling sore throat and a weakened immune system. And you know what? At the end of the day, again, still better than Hunt Down the Freeman.